we can get started. So hello, my name is Annie Gaines. I'm the Continuing Education Consultant here at the Idaho Commission for Libraries. And I'm super pleased that you are all joining us here today for today's info to go webinar, providing remote and vol virtual volunteer programs to our patrons. Uh, our presenter today is Colleen Clark, also at the Idaho Commission for Libraries, and I'm going to hand it over to her. Thank you for bearing with me as I just um, fix the screen here into presentation mode. Okay. Does that show up good for you, Annie? Yep, it looks great. Okay, perfect. So as Annie mentioned, I'm Colleen I'm from the Idaho Commission for Libraries in Boise, Idaho. And I wanted to talk today about um, the importance of virtual and remote volunteer programming to our patrons, um, ways that we can implement that. And I'll go over some tools and uh, great resources that we all have at our fingertips. So this is my info. I'll also have my email address at the end of the presentation, um, but it's just my name, Colleen.Clark at libraries.idaho.gov. I am the volunteer services coordinator here and I coordinate both our volunteers and our uh, talking book studio. I also uh, help provide um, resources to all of the library volunteer managers in Idaho. And I'm super excited to have folks from all over. So thank you for joining in. So I wanted to do our first poll to kind of just get the pulse of the group. So Annie, if you could pull that one up. It's in cat terms, what is your mood today? Hungry, bored, happy, sleepy, playful, or cucumber? Okay, so we have, oh, this is nice. Um, we have 25% are hungry, 63% um, are happy, and 13% are sleepy. So I think at a 63% happy, that's, that's pretty good. Um, I, there we go. So for today, I wanted to one, talk about volunteer programming at our libraries remote and virtual programs that we can offer and tools and resources that the Idaho Commission for Libraries has um, to share. And I know I'm really kicking off with a bunch of polls, but just to kind of see um, where everyone is at at their um, library organization, does your library have uh, any remote or virtual volunteer programs right now? Oh, we are about split in half of yes and no. So that's good. So I might um, can use some of your guys' help later on uh, when we are doing uh, brainstorming on ideas for remote positions. So the national impact of library public programs assessment um, that was done in conjunction with ALA they have benefits of programming and you want individuals um, will benefit from library programming, communities will benefit and libraries will benefit. And they go into a little bit of detail with each of these and I'm sorry it's in such small print, um, but you'll want to for individuals, uh, 
you're going to be offering them continuing education, lifelong learning. Um, you want to make sure to be able to incorporate folks of all ages, all income levels, um, and embrace your community's diversity. The communities will benefit. Your library's community um, will foster uh, networks, relationships, introduce residents to each other, introduce uh, your community members to people that maybe they wouldn't normally re, uh, interact with. So it's a really great, um, a great way to have uh, your communities get more engaged with, with each other, not just your library. So I am stuttering over my words. So libraries will also benefit. We know from volunteer programming that our volunteers can come in, uh, help us out so that staff aren't bogged down, maybe doing uh, cleaning, or maybe we don't have any staff on board that are graphic designers. You know, a lot of us can't afford that at our agency. So we're able to have a retired graphic designer come in or somebody that uh, is willing to donate a few hours a week to create a brochure for us. So we definitely benefit from that. We also receive a lot of benefit from just having more people engaged in our library programs, um, whether it's volunteer or not, they are uh, end up becoming community ambassadors. They're out there talking about our library, the programs that we have to offer with their family and friends. So I was, already talking a little bit about the volunteer programming, but we definitely are always looking at benefits of programming. So why do we want to offer the volunteer in there? And again, we're meeting those three things that were mentioned in the white paper. Individuals will benefit, communities will benefit, and libraries will benefit. Um, just in the chat box, if you guys have, uh, what are some of the ways that you think individuals um, volunteering can benefit from volunteering at our libraries? Now everyone's typing at once. Well, I will just get us started, but yeah, if you guys want to add anything in here, please do. Uh, our individuals, like I'd mentioned already with the continuing education, um, learning, experience in a library is great on a resume. Yes, thank you. So especially right now, we're gonna run into something very similar that we did in um, after 2008, which folks that are skilled laborers are going to be unemployed. And it really helps to fill in a gap when they have an opportunity to volunteer. Mentally and emotionally, yes. Uh, it is, we have, uh, like I had talked about in the course description, this is the reason why our communities need this the most right now. Um, we have a lot of uh, you know, retirees, seniors um, that have relied on volunteering as a way to have a, a social connection, but it's also uh, very important for you know, our teens, uh, our young adults, our kids that come to story times, all of that is this amazing social connection. It's harder to create virtually um, and through remote, but we can definitely do that. And gaining a sense of community. I think that you have the ability to feel like you're a part of your community because you're involved, you're getting to know people, but humans really do benefit from service having that feeling of purpose, of giving back, and being able to contribute to things that they benefit from. So let me go to our next slide here. So volunteer programming. There's a lot of things that our volunteers can do um, at our libraries that we have. So they might come in, do tutoring, an art project, answer phones, shelf books. Maybe they're gonna come in and build uh, furniture for us. So I'm gonna go a little bit more into other things that volunteers can do that would be just as beneficial to our agency as it is to them and our community. 
and remote and virtual volunteer programming. One, it's safe for the pandemic, even though we're coming out of that, uh, hopefully. And, but it also engages more members of the community. So I work at a state library and we are open Monday through Friday, eight to five. So that really limits who we can have come down and volunteer. A lot of people that have uh, normal work schedules aren't able to. So the majority of my on-site volunteers are actual retirees. So I'm gonna do one more poll, maybe, maybe two more. Uh, what type of volunteer programming do you utilize or want to utilize the most? And the questions here are short-term, long-term and skilled. I know sometimes these can overlap, but short-term might be people you come bring in for the day or you have assist you for the day. Long-term would be ones that maybe are gonna come over and over again, maybe once a month or once a week. And you're skilled or ones that bring specific skill set, like a graphic designer or a builder. So we have uh, about split down the middle of short-term and long-term, and then 30% of you wanted skilled mixed in there. So that will help me on talking about some of the positions. So this slide is super busy, but it's a great prompt for me. Um, I wanted to talk about how to get these great benefits from volunteers that are uh, either virtually volunteering or volunteering from home. We, one of the things is social media. So a lot of times our social media is handled by staff and that's great. We know what content we want to get out there and we know how we want it to be. And I definitely recommend um, to have staff post, but you can have your volunteers help create content and also to help promote it. So one of the first virtual volunteer programs I did was I would just have during like a fundraising event, I would have folks sign up for a one to two hour shift and would ask them to use a hashtag, to like, to share on their media of choice platform. And the more that you get that out there, then the more, for instance, you know, that you're meeting that algorithm of you're popping up on more people's feeds, you're having to not spend money to promote your content. And hopefully the more engaged you have, people who wanna check that out. You know, uh, folks love to also share photos of themselves and videos of themselves or people that they know. So if you have content that includes them that maybe they helped create and they will share and advertise for you, you know, why not do that? So we have done a lot of virtual story time at a lot of the libraries. And I think that in-person story time is gonna be fantastic. We can all get back to that. But we're able to not only reach more children um, doing it virtually because maybe they don't have transportation into the library. Uh, maybe it's too tight of a turnaround for their parents that are uh, working. But if you have recorded content on your Facebook page or your website, they can watch that anytime. And so have a volunteer that maybe you have a author in town, you have a uh, somebody that does the local theater, they can come in or just someone who really is passionate about that and, and can provide some really interesting content. Same things for your staff. So why not have volunteers train your staff? You can have uh, experts who um, do Excel, graphic designing, maybe they do social media and they can help provide that training to your staff. Do you have uh, staff that you know aren't designated in a certain role like volunteer management 
And you could have someone that comes in and assists with that or provides training. And also they could do virtual programs for your staff, especially right now, we are all exhausted and tired. It's just been this crazy year. So you could have somebody who donates an hour a week to either doing a live video or a recorded one of meditations or yoga with for your staff. You can also have creative content like music that plays uh, that you can either post on your Facebook page or you just have somebody do maybe a live, uh, a live program like playing piano in the background while uh, you're doing a fundraising event virtually. I did have uh, a story this past weekend from a friend that they actually had a penis do the, uh, their employee Zoom party, their annual party they do, and they had that. And the uh, musician accidentally had his computer on mute. And so they could see him playing and he was playing his heart out, but there was no music there. So you always want to make sure to have that covered. The other sort of content that our volunteers can do is uh, things that maybe you have that would totally be able to leave the library that maybe before you had them do it on site. So we have mailings at the Idaho Commission for Library and we need to have return envelopes folded in there. So you can send those out and have them, you know, just bring them back when they're done. It allows them to work on their own schedule. Also having these volunteers that can volunteer from home, volunteer outside of your normal business hours, you're going to have a greater community engagement. So your programming is reaching more people. You're able to show more people about your library and it's, it's really beneficial all around. So I was going to walk through our tool, um, Library Volunteer Management Toolbox that we have on our website. So let me just stop sharing this. Okay. So at the Idaho Commission for Libraries, you can go to libraries.idaho.gov forward slash volunteer. And on that page, let's see if I can show that page, just because that's an easier web address to read out. There is the library staff and volunteer management toolbox. This content is from all over and multiple resources, but the majority is from Get Involved. This is this sort of uh, consortium from Idaho, California, Texas, and Arizona. And we share a lot of different tools and resources and have created this great library. So here I'm gonna go through our managing remote volunteers. So I'll click on this one, um, our position descriptions that include um, remote volunteers. So, this has so many, you can see there's a lot more um, remote programming and virtual programming that came out of this year. Things like closed captioning, podcast transcripts,er um, building stools, they actually used uh, books that were no longer um, in circulation. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up this one day activity. Let me... So this is virtual opportunities for teens. And this is just a um, idea list, list of how to expert. So they can share on video or video a skill um, and give a demonstration of something they do very well. And these can then be shared on uh, social media, provide a video on your website. We have like the coloring activity sheets, take and make a kit assembler. So if you have a bunch of kits that maybe either are not items that would be returned or they're multiples and tedious to assemble, 
definitely take advantage of your volunteers to assist with that. Material reviewer, it's really great to, if you wanted to have uh, YA material be read by your YA audience, and then they actually can do a review and post that on your website or on your social media. And again, you would have them turn that into you first so that you could make sure it fit into what you want to share as an agency. They have uh, a marketer. And so I talked a little bit about that of where they actually have challenges um, listed out, which is nice. So they have, you know, complete and document your posts of three of the activities below. And so you can use these, maybe you translate it to a certain amount of hours for volunteering. So, so many high schools now actually require their students to have that before they can graduate. So you're able to kind of incorporate everybody and what they would want to do. And I apologize for the time delay in this, but I'm going to share one more, which was, um, Lit line volunteers. This is volunteers that are uh, recording themselves reading a story or a poem and that are made available on their website. And I had talked a little bit about this before, but this one is great uh, that it has um, guidance for the volunteer and information for them to provide the best product possible. So those kind of had an overall description, but there are a lot of postings that you can actually just copy from this that are a position description. So they will have the format there. You can take these, copy them, add your logo. Everything that's in this database is shareable content for you to use. So you are able to have things like, these were the position descriptions. There's also management tools. So you have here volunteer confidentiality policy, volunteer risk and screening, and these are all targeted towards library volunteers. A lot of times volunteer coordinators and managers were having to look at nonprofits for our information, but this is a really great resource as they have the same types of tasks and duties and responsibilities to their communities that we all do. So I wanted to go back to the toolbox. Another resource that they had in there, well, I talked about the volunteer management training, or I showed that on the screen, but if you have, let's see, I have to kind of just shrink this down a little bit. So I'm gonna do that. See, I'll go to the training. And this is actually training for us, the volunteer coordinators and volunteer management. So there's eight strategies for creating a more inclusive volunteer program, questionnaire design, tip sheet, and outdoor programming. They have uh, materials on there too, uh, it's a little bit buried now, but on operating virtual and remote volunteers. One of the things that's gonna be really important when you have a remote volunteer program is making sure that you have that sense of community. That's definitely a large portion of why our volunteers keep coming back. And we definitely want them to have that good experience so that they will be those community ambassadors talking about how amazing Lake Hazel is um, and and wanting to encourage more patrons to visit their website, access online material, or go into the library. So this is a great guide. Um, I am constantly looking for finding new material 
and posting that on this website. So eventually this article will be outdated, but keep coming back and looking for different material on there. It has uh, information on activities that you can do. Maybe you wanna have a volunteer appreciation uh, annual party on Zoom for your virtual volunteers. Maybe you have uh, kits that you send home for all of your remote volunteers that maybe aren't the ones who are accessing the internet. They're at home you know, assembling or folding. So it's, it's, it has a lot of nice things in there to make sure that you make it a good experience for your patrons. Here are the templates that I talked about. So they have volunteer applications, confidentiality agreements, handbooks that cover everything that you have there, uh, risk assessment for your library, things that you should keep in mind if you maybe haven't started a volunteer program yet, information that you can take to your leadership and to your board. Volunteer Match and Just Serve are the prominent uh, volunteer finding websites in Idaho that we use. I'm sure each, I know Volunteer Match is nationwide. And so, but I, I think there are different ones in every state. And it always depends on sort of the folks that you have in your community, what is most beneficial. If you find something that you're like, you know, this is nationwide and they should be using that, please forward it to me. Um, again, I'll pop up my email address. Same with all the other tools, send that along. One of the reasons why I like to access them, not just as somebody who's posting position descriptions, but I can look at what everyone else is posting. So volunteer match allows me to search in my area code. And then um, I can look at different virtual volunteer opportunities that are coming up. So let's see, sorry if I'm making you dizzy here, but they have virtual opportunities. I've entered that I want the zip code 83702. And from here, if I have remote projects to support children with medical needs, I can see how they've titled this, what they have listed as the description for their agency, things that uh, the actual task. Uh, Ronald um, McDonald House is right across from one of our major hospitals. And until our major hospital allows volunteers, they aren't able to allow on-site volunteers. So they've been trying to think of ways to incorporate volunteers, uh, especially since their volunteers are donors. And that's another component is you, it's definitely something that's talked a lot more about in the nonprofit sector, but people that are really engaged in your library. So you think about all the points of engagement. You have them as a patron, then you get them involved in your uh, uh, additional programs that you offer. So you have their children are coming into your children programming and their teens are coming into your teen programming and they're coming into your adult programming. And one of those adult programmings that you offer is volunteering. And so uh, with that, then they have multiple connections to your organization. And so when you are looking for the book sell from your friends of library, or you're wanting to um, have, have donations for maybe you have a, a new, um, new furniture that you need. And so you're doing a solicitation there as well. The other thing is that these are your taxpayers. These are the folks that, however your library is funded, they're usually the ones who are contributing to that and voting on policy that controls that. So you want them to be in favor of you and have that great experience and know what you do. Let's see here. So I'm going to switch back to my presentation. So again, this website is libraries.idaho.gov forward slash volunteer. 
And then you can go to where I indicated on the screen, or you can just add on and do forward slash library hyphen volunteer hyphen management. And that should bring you there. If you have any issues accessing that, or you have tools that you would like to share, please send those to me. I would greatly appreciate it. So I wanted to open it up to questions from the group and I might have a few different prompts, but I wanted to see if there were any questions. Oh, thank you for putting that in there. Sorry, why I'm just trying to figure this out here. Um, if you guys would type into the chat, uh, what would be a, so those of you that had said you had virtual volunteer programs, what is a, a virtual uh, volunteer position that you have right now at your library or that you have offered? Oh, thank you, Annie. She's she's getting us started there. She had some virtual volunteer content reviewers for some education modules. That's a good one. Sarah has teens in my community are required to have a community service hour in order to graduate. After months of having nothing, I borrowed some ideas from other libraries like doing book reviews and kindness rocks among other things. Oh, that's awesome. One of the hardest parts for myself has been that I do have a lot of volunteers that rely on the connection and coming on site and participating in volunteering yet probably maybe 50% of them are not what I could have as virtual volunteers. They don't feel comfortable next to a computer. They don't feel comfortable. They don't have a smartphone. They're still uh, learning landlines or they're still learning. They're not learning landlines. They got that one down. They're still, uh, still have landlines. So the, that is where it is great to have like what you just mentioned of the crafty stuff having them build things at, at home. Sometimes I have looked at part of us is to provide that opportunity. So maybe you partner with another organization to be able to facilitate that, see if you have patrons that would be interested. So for instance, here United Way does um, just making notes to put in teen packs that are like their hygiene packs that go out once a week. And just having a note of, of hope or hi, how are you? Having a stash of happy birthday cards that volunteers made. Those have been really great. And we actually did that for our staff here at Idaho Commission for Libraries. So trying to find ways to offer that sort of programming for your uh, non tech uh, volunteers. Thanks, Annie. The additional parts of, of programming too with your, with your volunteers, the gaps that you want to fall into or the gaps that you don't, you don't want to have are, um, again, sharing appreciation. 
So it's a lot easier when you're seeing those volunteers on site to say, thank you, Joe, for coming in and everything you've done. So how do you do that with your remote volunteers? I usually have uh, send emails, but I have little images that I send on there. And for the folks that aren't on the computer, I send um, cards to them. I also do engage, I do have done lunch and learns. It ties in well to having um, a new software that we're implementing. So I need to have them on there. But just like you do with your staff on a Zoom call, give them time to talk to each other, you know, put that in the agenda of 15 minutes that they just kind of get to see how each other are doing and build that sense of community. You don't want to lose that aspect because that is also part of the appreciation and the good experience. I think that kind of covers all the tips that I have on, on this. Oh, we have someone else just wrote in here. Oh, that's so cool. So uh, they have uh, students that come in for 30 hours during summer reading to help with programs during the school year to shelve and make bulletin boards, et cetera. What do they do for the summer reading? Nice, that's great. And how much cooler is a 16 year old to the kid at summer reading than, than, the, uh, than I would be? So that's always, that's always fun. Well, I will kind of turn this, well, not kind of, I will turn this back over to Annie. Um, and then if anyone else has any questions or anything they'd like to share, please do so. But also this is my email address and uh, colleen.clark at libraries.idaho.gov. And I would love to hear more from, from you, resources, and please come visit our website and snag any of those tools that you want or go to Get Involved Powered by Your Library. Colleen, did you see the comment about um, teens in the library become library officers? Which like, how how adorable, how cute is that? I I love that idea, which, which gives them a, a sense of responsibility and encourages others to want to join. That's, that is excellent. That is um, volunteer programming at its best when you are showing, uh, building that trust, that relationship, and then they're also modeling for future volunteers. Um, and also that is a really great contribution that your programming is making available for these teens. You know, they're busy, they get to learn from you, they get to have that sense of responsibility um, and interact with their peers in a really healthy, safe environment. So uh, thank you, Tevin, for offering that programming. And thank you for sharing about it with us. So thank you so much to Colleen um, for your wisdom that you shared with us today. Um, I'll share that link again before we end um, to the, the volunteer management toolkit. But it looks like a fantastic resource full of tons of links that will be updated periodically. That's fantastic. Um, so after this webinar is ended, you're going to be prompted to fill out a survey. And we are always appreciative of, of your honest feedback. Um, because we want our webinars to be what you need and be what you're hoping for. Um, we're going to send you uh, an email in about a week that'll have a link to this recording. And if you didn't get a chance to do, do your evaluation at that point, you'll be able to do it at, at that the next point as well. Um, and then coming up, I wanted to tell you about the next InfoTigo webinars. We're getting a little busy because um, there's a few more opportunities happening. Um, and so the next two info to webinars are going to be special sessions on a couple um, emergency benefits that are happening in regards to broadband or uh, mobile hotspots, 
and um, internet connected devices. And then uh, we'll return to our regularly scheduled InfoDigo programming on Monday, June 21st with virtual facilitation that rocks um, to sort of beef up those virtual facilitation skills. So thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you again to Colleen for presenting. I'm going to end the recording now.